new GWR Large Priory from Hornby has just landed. And with that in mind, I've decided to use the arrival of this quite expensive model to try and make the cheap alternative a little bit better. That alternative is this, the uh, Hornby Large Priory. So obviously this is the previous incarnation of the Large Priory, which stems from Airfix days. This isn't a terrible model by any means, especially if you pick up a more modern one with a reworked chassis by Hornby, as you'll get both the decent running and also decent crisp paintwork that Hornby do so well nowadays. But you can't get past the fact that this is a 40 year old model, and parts of it are a bit clunky and could be a bit better, but that's what we're to do today. This initially started as something that I didn't want to do too much to. However, as I wrote the list down for what I was going to do, I quickly realised that perhaps there was a little bit more to this than I anticipated. But here we go, all the same. So what we're using this time around is uh, from Brassmaster, some GWR coupling hooks, lamp brackets, and brake shoes and riggings, and also some vacuum pipes. From Wizard Models, GWR front pony trucks, front wheel sets, and collet buffers. We're also using some 3mm brass tube, varying sizes of brass wire, handrail knobs, plastic card, glue and glaze, model filler, some 050 gauge guitar string, capside number plates, crew, paint, matte varnish, coal, and transfers from the HMRS sheet. I'll also give the chassis a bit of an overhaul and service as it doesn't really run particularly well at present. I had a number of these items in my spare parts drawer already, so this only really cost me £20. But going through the costing of it all, it does come to around close to £40. But with the cost of the model thrown in, this one cost me £30 off eBay, it comes to around £70, which is around half the price of the new Hornby one. So let us begin. After taking it apart, which was just a case of one screw at the front, we can be destructive. All the handrails, the lamp brackets, the buffers, the buffer beam paraphernalia, smoke box doors, smoke box stays, front pony truck, brake shoes, coal load and outside steam pipes all need to be removed. Once everything has been removed, tidy up any rough edges and we can move on. Once that has all been removed, I did some more refined destruction. I took the blade of a knife and ran it along the underside of the running plate around the edges. This did take a while and quite a few passes to slowly wear it down and thin out the plate. One eternity later. Just to make it look a little bit finer. Now I can't take credit for this technique. I, I did discover this uh, whilst researching the class and found an article by John Darch. So any praise, pass on to him instead of me. Next, for the actual rebuild. I started at the front and worked my way backwards throughout the model. Firstly, I put together the front pony truck and I painted this up and trial fitted it to the engine. This did need a little bit of modification to get it fitting properly as the mounting hole wasn't quite in the right spot. So whilst frequently trialing it in position, I found the optimum location for the hole. I then put this to one side for safekeeping for the time being and now we're onto the buffer bin. I started with the coupling hook first. I simply slotted that straight into the hole that the factory fitted one came out of. And this took a little bit of filing on the actual hook, but I got there eventually. Then onto the vacuum hose. Now, I thought I bought one of these. However, I bought the wrong type. Dull. So that's being put in the spares box for now. And I'm going to make one out of other things found in the spares box. Most notably, some guitar wire and some brass rod. I bent the brass rod to shape and constantly comparing it to photos and to the actual buffer beam itself to ensure a good fit. And then once that was done, I then bent the, uh, the guitar wire and soldered that in place onto the uh, brass rod and then trial fitted it and made sure it looked about right. And this was then glued into place. After that, I moved on to the buffers and these were super simple to fit. Just simply make up the shanks, run a three millimeter drill bit on the centers of the holes as the back of the shanks sticks out a little bit and then super gluing into position and then the heads themselves will be fitted after painting. Next, moving up a bit, I installed the new smoke box door. I made a new smoke box door 
front out of plastic art. This took a little bit of time to make to ensure it was completely round and then central. Eventually this was all glued into position and the smoke box start installed. I now took the opportunity to fill in the holes from the old lamp bracket. I did this now as it meant when it comes to installing the new brackets, the filler should be dry and solid. I then made the steam pipes using some 3mm brass pipe I had. This took a lot longer than I expected and took some serious trial and error. Emphasis here, bit on error. The most annoying part was that I had to make two that were identical. Once I had made them, I put them to one side and I took the time to fill the holes that had been left by removing the old ones. I hope to do this now rather than earlier for literally no other reason than I forgot to. However, once I had completed all this, I feel like they look far better than what they did originally. Next, I moved back towards the front, back to the holes that I'd filled in earlier, filed them flat and prepared them for the new lamp brackets. I installed those, again constantly referencing pictures of a prototype to ensure they were in the right place and then these were just simply super glued into position. Next, and I made the smoke box stays. These were made out of a bit of brass wire and some thin plastic card on the running plate. Again, this was a bit of trial and error when trying to get this right. But eventually, I got it looking like what the pictures and drawings showed. Next, I moved on to the handrails. Pause. Now, I thought those handrails were just Hornby being lazy, as I didn't remember ever remember really seeing any handrails to this design before. However, as someone pointed out when I posted a progress picture online, the original handrails were actually prototypical, and I've made myself look a little bit silly and I've wasted some wire and some knobs in the process. In general, I have a bit of a vendetta against handrails, and this occasion hasn't really helped, but in the past I've had drop on the floor and lose the knobs. I hate losing my knobs. So I took my time and didn't get too angry with it, and I got there. So don't get angry at your knobs, you'll get there eventually. Now turning to the back, I did to the rear buffer beam what I did to the front buffer beam, except this time I had the correct vacuum hose. So that was glued into position, and I also filled in the holes from the chassis mounting points on the rear. To counteract the removal of these, I made a small platform out of plastic card for the loco to sit on on the rear bunker, which was simply glued into position. I then looked to the actual coal bunker itself. I had initially thought that this was just a single piece of moulded coal on the bunker. However, the moulded coal also had the rear of the cab attached to it and the lamp cutter in it. Bugger. So I cut the coal load off with the, with the Dremel. And whilst doing this, I had the great idea that I should replace the window bars too. Whilst this did come out better than the original, it was a little bit stressful with the small pieces of brass wire and the possibly small holes really close together that I drilled. But uh, I think I'm actually pretty happy, happy with this, it doesn't look that terrible. So after that cut out the lamp bracket of the coal load, I then fabricated a shelf to put the new coal load on eventually. Once that was made, I glued it all into position. Next, I turned briefly to the chassis. I decided to replace the brake rodding. This for me is very much a learning curve. I've never properly attempted anything like this, except on the Hornby Pannier, but that was just a little bit more basic and it didn't really come out that great. So for this, I used the, the kit from Brass Masters and used some brass rod. I was referring to the pictures and the drawings of the real thing throughout the whole time, just to try and make sure that I can make it as accurate as possible. And it was a little bit of a challenge to try and get it to fit properly and also not short out the wheels, and now, it's on to the fun part, painting. Well, sort of. Halfway through making this video, I moved house, hence the massive delay in, in this video coming out. And I'm now working on a brand new layout, so my efforts have been slightly diverted. And I'm not really wanting to put all my effort into a model that I won't have a layout for it to run on, so for the time being, I'm halting it here. However, if I was to continue, the loco would be fully resprayed as you can see here, I got as far as the primer, then the transfers, and lastly the coal, crew, and other plates. Yeah, I'm sorry that I haven't been able to finish this one. I'm as disappointed as you are, so depending on how disappointed you actually are. However, I do hope to follow this up one day, and I'll show off the finishing steps. 
yeah, thank you for watching. Even if this is basically only half a video, it means a lot. Especially as this was pretty in depth for me. And I really hope you've stuck with me for this long. If you did, celebrate by clicking that subscribe button and maybe even like or, or comment, that'd be pretty cool. But yeah, anything, any of those things, that'd be swell. Thank you.